many economists and experts believe some of these lost jobs will not come back anytime soon. That is a particular concern in the retail sector. Also big news this morning, Fry's Electronics is going out of business. Gordon Taylor is the latest big name retailer to go bankrupt. 200 year old Brooks Brothers. Payless Shoe Source. They've called it the retail apocalypse, but what's happening right now just south of the Las Vegas Strip is like nothing we've ever seen. If you were to ask any rich person the fastest way to get really wealthy, they'd more than likely tell you to go and invest in some real estate. But what about if your real estate investment was worth $120 million one day and sold for a scant $400,000 a few years later? You'd have to wonder what went wrong. Is the complete failure of the Prism outlet in Prim, Nevada, just south of the Las Vegas Strip, a casualty of COVID-19? An inevitable response to the rise of the Amazon.com army? Or is it somehow something more complex? From glorious triumph to a catastrophic collapse, this is the strange story of the largest failed shopping experience Las Vegas has ever had the chance to bear witness to. This is the twisted tale of the Prism Outlets at Prim, Nevada. Oh my gosh, what was that? Hollister. Hollister. Oh, that was the big thing back in the day. Hollister. We had the American Eagle here. Right. When did you guys first come down here? God, we came back here in... 25 years ago. Hollister, American Eagle, Nike, Tommy Bahama. Just a few of the internationally recognizable brands that at one time dotted the landscape along Interstate 15 at Prim. This is of course a long time ago, in 1998 to be precise, when the factory outlet officially opened as the fashion outlets of Las Vegas. If you had not visited all those years ago, you probably would never know it, but the retail scene in Vegas was very different back then. There was some retail, with the forum shops at Caesars making its debut in 1992, but this was small and catered to a high-end crowd. The South Outlet opened a year later in 1993, but what about folks on their way out of town? Well, why not give them one last chance to spend their last dollars here in Nevada? Unfortunately for the initial owners, this strategy fell flat. The center faltered to garner an audience, but managed to turn things around after shifting their focus on Southern Nevada residents. Heck, if the tourists don't find you sexy, sell to the locals, right? The 370,000 plus square foot center was a hit. They had big names and the shoppers responded. But then came the recession of 2008 and fashion retail, as we all know, is one of the very first things to go when people stop spending. In the aftermath of the economic downturn, the fashion outlet struggled mightily. After declaring initial bankruptcy, the fashion outlet was bought up by new owners and given a facelift. The new owners changed the name to Prism Outlets and set about rebranding the center as a more family-friendly attraction. Now, if the story stopped there, if the rebrand was successful, that would be one thing. But this story is really about what happens next. The story of what happened next, what led us to all of, well, this, is maybe the most interesting story in Vegas that no one is talking about. The story seeped in lawsuits, scandal, and the loss of over 1,200 jobs. Ah, the corporate raider. There's nothing more American than buying low and selling a high, even if it means sometimes destroying the lives of everyday people in the process. Add to this allegations of corrupt Wall Street lenders, multi-million dollar loans, the siphoning of funds, and a billionaire that made a possible profit from the entire loss, and you have the recipe for a nearly 199% write-off in the middle of the desert. And with that, meet Carl Icahn. If you don't know of him, you probably know of some of his past work. Carl likes to keep busy buying controlling interests in companies like Western Union, Nabisco, and Viacom, to name just a few. Carl's also the guy that bought the unfinished and bankrupt Fountain Blue on the Las Vegas Strip for $106 million. He later sold it off for $650 million, but that's another video in the works for another day, so be sure to subscribe to this channel right now. So Carl is worth about $16.2 billion and is currently going to war via the courts over the Prism outlet in Prim, Nevada. But why file a major lawsuit over an outlet center in the middle of nowhere? Well, after taking out a $73 million mortgage on the property back in 2012, a loan made up with funds by Carl Icahn, among others, the mall continued to fail for what we'll call Amazon.com people ordering from home convenience reasons. By 2017, this mortgage went into default. A company called Rialto Capital Advisors was brought in to try to get the remaining $67 million of loans repaid, but instead allegedly kept delaying the sale of the property while collecting $12.85 million in fees and advanced expenses on the outlet's 
center from the original lenders. And after all this, the entire world shut down due to COVID-19, retail started failing everywhere, and the property value continued to sink in both value and actual tenants. Eventually, it did end up selling for a pathetic $400,000, just a little less than you would need to buy a single-family home in Vegas as of June 2022. A 199% devaluation from the $120 million appraisal just a few decades earlier. A lawsuit was filed in Clark County courts alleging Rialto defrauded the original investors. The suit brought by Icon says that they lost countless millions on the loan, spent all that money, and have nothing now to show for it. Now, if you're thinking it's about time a billionaire sees some sort of loss, you would be incorrect. Behind the scenes, Carl Icahn did what someone like him always does. He bet against the entire Prism Outlet Center project, while at the same time lending them money using something called a CMBX6. That's a Wall Street index dealing with loans on commercial centers like shopping malls that billionaires can invest in. In this case, he went short, betting on the center to fail. Icon walked away with a presumed profit on the entire project, took the investors to court, let 1,200 people lose their jobs, and this is now what we have left. When you break free of the warm embrace of the neon lights of the Las Vegas Strip, reality begins to set in. The Nevada desert greets you with nothing but emptiness. Hot in the summer, cold in the winter, and always just sort of inhospitable. It's only after 40 minutes of traversing this desolate, barren, almost alien land that you'll find the Prism Outlet Center. In a way, this abandoned center makes total sense. A shopping and dining mecca to the over 18 million vehicles that pass over the Nevada-California state line on what Las Vegas locals like to call the 15 every year. Prim itself is an interesting place, a small community of just about 1,100, a handful of unconventional casinos and hotels. If you ever wanted to ride a roller coaster on the way home, this is the place. A great topic for another video, so be sure to subscribe to the channel. So if 18 million cars pass through, what gives? Sure, it's easy to point the figure at Amazon.com and COVID, but there has to be more to it. And as I pulled in and parked, and greeted by a thrift store at an outlet center of all things, my mind started to put things together. So as hard as it is to believe, when this place opened in the late 90s, there was close to 10,000 people all lined up clamoring to get in. By the early to mid 2000s, this was 99% leased with high-end brands that you have heard of. So what exactly happened? Why is there lawsuits over this place going to court as recently as a month ago? Why was this sold for $400,000, 370,000 square feet? We're gonna get to the bottom of it while we explore the dead prism outlets here in Southern Nevada. My name is Steven, I'm not leaving Las Vegas. And as we say on the channel, let's go into action. Sometimes things happen beyond your control As if they have a life of their own The choices you make, what appears to be right Seems you just have no say This used to be a nice place. It actually pains me to see it this way. This was a place where you could get away from the hectic madness of the crowded Las Vegas Strip, have lunch, do some shopping. My wife Caroline and I had one of our first dates here. We, like many, made real memories in Prim. You could even check out the actual car where notorious gangsters Bonnie and Clyde met their end. The car is still here, but the sense of life is as drained from the Prism outlet today as it was from those two infamous criminals the day that they met their end. At a glance, this looks like a giant indoor art installation. This is not just a clever way to hide closed shops. The new owners called it the Mural Oasis. The mall website boasts about its world-renowned artists, and the art, you must admit, is quite gorgeous. So at this point, any logical person points to Amazon as the reason for the mall's failure, except that excuse makes no sense. But who cares? This entire mall today makes no sense. I mean, just look at this place. This is like some kind of retail time capsule. Where else in Vegas do you see a sign pointing to where you can find a payphone? How many under the age of 20 even know what a payphone is anymore? So no excuses on the retail front. In recent years, both the North and South Outlet Centers in Las Vegas have undergone renovations and even expansion. 
People still love to shop, and vacationers in Vegas want things now. They don't come here to shop online on their phones. They come here to spend their gambling winnings and money they don't really have. And even before we entered the COVID era, tourism was up year after year in the city. So there has to be something more to it. Is it in the success of retail on the Strip that we find the cause of the epic failure down in Prim? In the end, perhaps it was a blend of factors that led to the largest real estate write-off in recent Las Vegas memory. A rapid rise in retail on the Las Vegas Strip, the emergence of a consumer willing to order online from the comfort of their own home, a society taught to avoid people for fear of a strange virus, and a government lockdown that robbed everyone for a time of life as they knew it. All of these things contributed, in my belief, to the epic downfall of the Prism Outlet Center in Prim, Nevada. But not all hope is lost. This wouldn't be the first shopping mall in the Las Vegas area to fail, and chances are, it won't be the last. Maybe with a dash of smart marketing, the right combination of stores, and a must-have anchor tenant, the outlets in Prim can one day rise from the Mojave, like the proverbial phoenix we've all taught to believe exists. And while you're here, here's a couple of other short films on Las Vegas. One of them about the current crisis at Lake Mead, and another one about an epic failure on the Las Vegas Strip that will probably be eye-opening for you. If you're just browsing through, be sure to subscribe for my future documentary style content if you are into that kind of thing. My name is Steven, I'm not leaving Las Vegas, and I thank you for watching.